So I am Gabby Ackman, Business Development Director at Women in Payments, and I'm delighted today to be chatting with Dana Brunt, Global Head of Digital Customer Channels at Swift Base in Belgium. Welcome, Dana. Perhaps you could start with a couple of words of introduction. As you introduce me, I'm Dana. I'm based in Belgium. I'm also Belgian as a background, Flemish speaking. I am at Swift now for 16 years, and previously to that, I was working at the Bank of New York, also in Brussels. My background is history, so I have a major and um, a master in contemporary history, and I sort of rolled into a career in the financial and te technology services. So interesting. For those in the audience who may be new to my career in six, we start with some rapid fire questions, just looking for one word answers here, followed by six more detailed questions. Are you ready, Dana? I will try to be. <laughs> Let's get started. Who or what inspires you? Time bound, but overall, I think it's my parents. Do you attribute your success to luck or hard work? It's probably a platitude, but it's both. I mean, you need to have, you need to work hard to get to your goal. So in talent only gets you that far, but you also need to be lucky. You need to be at the right place at the right time. Next question. What drives you? My kids for one, I'm a single mom of two. They're teenagers right now. Your favorite quote or motto you live by? It's the quote of, you know, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. When applying for a new opportunity, what percentage of required attributes do you feel you need to have in order to be confident in your application? I would not say that I'm yet at, you know, going for it if it's half percent, uh, 50 percent, but definitely more to 80, I guess. Thank you, Dana. Now that we know a bit more about you, let's move on to the in-depth question about your journey. What has been your biggest challenge as you climbed the ladder in the payments industry? I think it's over time that you discover that it's the diversity of thinking that, you know, as much as I preach it or, you know, I try to help on, on, on that topic of diversity and inclusion, I'm part of that debate as well. And I think that's the strength that I can bring in any job that I did, that I come from a different background. I come from a different skill set. I've, I've learned to question, to listen, to compare. But it's still constantly a reminder of, you know, I am at the right place and, and I can contribute and we need that sort of diversity um, around the table. I kind of need a validation for myself or remind myself that it's the right place and, and the right industry um, for me. What do you feel has been your greatest accomplishment in your career? Well, I think the, the part that I'm most proud of is, is probably what I said achieved the last two years in the midst of COVID. Um, we went, we were on an agile journey at Swift and in the first year, um, I got to apply to the role of triplete, which means that, you know, I had to build a virtual team of 120 people in the midst of COVID that not necessarily work together, came from three different divisions and, and started from scratch, you know, with boot camps that were over two time zones because the, uh, the group is split between Belgium and Kuala Lumpur. Later, you feel that, you know, you're, you've established a mature group, a group that works well together, that, you know, survived that whole difficult period of COVID and then got uh, back in or tries to go back in normality, but still has to work over two different time zones and and keep a very complex environment um, in mind. Wonderful, amazing. Is there one thing you would uh, do differently? And, and if there were one thing, what would it be? I actually often respond, no, <laughs> because as much as there might be moments in time where you say, Phew, uh, if I would have known, I mean, this is part of the learning process. And I think if I would have done things differently in my past, I might not end up where I am uh, today. How important have your networks and connections been in assisting your career in the payment landscape? Networking aspect is super important, even though you might not be always the most extrovert person and may not be super comfortable by, you know, 
getting to know new people or to go there uh, yourself. I think what I've discovered is that I can rely on others and through others meet new people and, you know, gradually you gain more confidence and, and it's what keeps you motivated, I would say, to to be in this space, but also to to continue growing as well, both as a person as in your career. As a senior female leader, how have you helped shape the culture of your current business? I drive very strong on, on my personal values. I, I think, you know, if, when you grow in a career, you learn to compromise for sure. I mean, it's not ever black and white when you start your career. But I always speak up when it comes in conflict with my own values. And I might not always win the case or I might not always, but I, I feel at least I need to speak up and, and be true to myself. What advice would you give to aspiring women professionals in this industry? Don't over plan your career and, and coming back to the box of chocolates, you know, be ready for surprises and, you know, you never know what comes on your path and be open to that. It might not always, it doesn't mean you always have to say yes, but at least consider it. Compromises will always be there. But again, if you fundamentally have to change who you are, it's not good. Thank you for that advice. On that inspiring note, thank you very much, Dana, for sharing your career journey with us. Thank you all for listening. And I encourage you to join us online for the many other episodes of My Korean Six, where we chat with inspirational leaders from around the world of payment.